you've got your sobriety date in your social media bio somewhere. I think I saw it. So um, I know what that's uh, like. One like, week, what am I, man. Like <laughs> one of my um, old um, roommates was, uh, you know, he was in a booze and crack and weed and all that stuff. And, you know, you, you know, you would have thought by the stories that he told that, you know, he would have been this like, you know, skinny rail, you know, like a pinky finger sort of thing. But he was like this fat, he, he was like half Italian, half French, big ass, bad hair dude, like an Afro practically. It was just like everywhere, total mess. And, and he used to, uh, used to talk about like his, you know, his days back in the day where all the crazy stuff that he would, would do to try to get his hands on stuff like crack or weed or alcohol. And he went sober and was like, we used to poke fun at him, right? You know, because back in our times, we'd be like, you know, buddy of mine be rolling a joint and be like, hey, hey, come on, buddy. You know, you want some of this? <laughs> you know, he would never budge, right? Like he was always firm on it, which was good for him because he, because he said he would go to a dark place when he played with the stuff. Um, were you into crack? Was it was it crack? Was it booze? Like, like nah, what was it where know, you grew so, up? So, yeah, man, the, um, the crack stuff is just jokes, man. That's, that's you know, how I cope with a lot of the stuff I've seen. Yeah, because you often say that crackheads are like the hardest working guys out there, right? For sure, you know, and, Explain that. and you know, where that came from, I, I, I remember one day, I, I can't remember where it was going, it was somewhere with my mom, though, I know that, because my mom is the one that said it to me, and and we, we come out, and we're walking to the bus stop, and this, this junkie comes, like, scattering across the court, uh, from one end to the other, just running, working, and my mom just looked at him and shook her head, and was like, man, that fucking junkie, man, or she called him a crackhead, thing. like, he been up for, like, four days, man. Just chasing a rock, and it, that that always just stuck with me, mm -hmm. like like four days, god damn. And then on top of that, I, I had seen like stuff that I probably should not have seen. Uh, you know, we used to be babysat uh, by some straight up like addicts, man. They was they was shooting up when we were around and smoking when we were around. In fact, one of my earliest memories, I thought. Uh, I, we were over at the house being babysat when my mom was coming back from wherever she was coming back from. And we I picked up what I thought was a squirt gun and I squirted it on the couch. It wasn't until I was later that I, that I was like, oh, that was heroin. And that's why it was such a big... I was like, why is she so angry about just water? Like, just the water is going dry. And I was like, oh, that's because it was it was the dope. And, and It was heroin in a syringe? Yeah, and, and you oh, know... smokes, man. Like, why is this out around kids, first of all? Um, and secondly, you know, you just you just get used to seeing that kind of stuff, and and so I learned to just joke about it, man. Because yeah. otherwise, you get you know, but what's the old saying, man? You can laugh a little or cry a lot. I chose the laugh route entirely, and now it's just become like a thing that's still funny to me because people, because because now now it's funny because so many people follow me, yeah. and and a lot of times the way the social media algorithms work. They won't see all of my posts. They'll, they'll see, you know, some self improvement, some motivation, whatever, and then they'll see me talking shit about crackheads. I'm like, what is this guy all like? And it, that's why that's funny to me. Right? Yeah. But as far as what my personal issues were, I was I was the booze man, and and that was my thing. And you know, when you talk about doing whatever you can to get it, 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 it took me a while to come to terms with that particular part because because for me it was just recognizing what got me sober was recognizing okay this is really getting in the way. it has gotten in the way of every aspect of my life and I was just on a precipice of some some really good things happening and I said let me put it down let me see how far I can go and like like when I stopped drinking my intention was to only do it for like two years. Mm -hmm. and, I was coming, and then after a year, I was like, wow, man, I, not only do I have a lot of, like, like I made it far and have done a lot and I feel great, but I got a lot of issues. And one of the issues that I realized, man, yeah, I had, I had really started like structuring my whole life, my friends, my social life, even my, my training at the gym, I structured it around drinking. It wasn't until my coach pointed out that I was showing up to the gym smelling like booze that I was like, okay, that's a problem. Wasn't until people were like got around. I was like, oh, he just came over for the holiday. I had a few friends say this, and because I was doing it, just going over for going. They'd invite me over because because I never spent holidays with my family even when I was younger. Uh, now because I just I, I never wanted to be around them, but I go, I drink, and then once the booze was up, or I felt like I wouldn't be able to drive, whatever, I took off. Uh, pretty much, you know going out every night of the week even knowing you know i overdraw my bank account to drink that's that's a bad sign 
So there were a lot of bad things going were on. Were you drinking Tuesday. every day of the week, like drunk every um, day of the week? Or? I wasn't. Well, well, yeah, yeah. You know what? When I lived in, when I could afford it, I did. Yeah, mm. especially because because uh, part of part of the uh, the boxing arc is that for the last two years of my amateur career, I actually spent it out in Los Angeles under this uh, this banner they were trying to build, where they were taking former Division One athletes and turning them into uh, boxers. I was not a former Division One athlete by a long shot, but I beat their guy that they had put a lot of money into at the National Golden Gloves. He actually went on to represent us in the Olympics and, and fought for the world title twice, Dominic Brazil. So, so I beat him, and they sent me out there, and, I went, they, when they, and they brought me out. And I, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. I was broke as hell at home, mm-hmm. and they were they were talking about paying me three grand a month to train plus rent. I said, sold, and they flew me out. Now, I got out there, and I have a driver's license. And I don't know if you've ever been to L.A. You can't live in that city and have a social life without a car. I mean, the, the public transport is just not designed. Plus, it's it's built out wide as opposed to dense. You know, it's mm-hmm. like four times the area of New York with a fourth of the population. Still mm-hmm. a big city, but it's, it's you need need transportation. So I spent a lot of time alone and bored. And, and here's what's crazy. Back here in PA, I live in one of two states, PA and Utah, where the the um, the liquor is still controlled by the state. So so you gotta go to state. We called them state stores growing up, right? Chris Rock made a joke. I think it was Chris Rock or Dave Chappelle. Man, I don't want to be you know all black people look the same and shit. But uh, he made a joke about you know you gotta prepare yourself when you go to the projects. You just look out the window and see liquor store, gun store, gun store, liquor store. I didn't get that joke because I grew up in PA when I first heard it. When I got out to Cali, and I could go right over to the Target across the street and pick up a bottle uh, of some Jack or something, I was like, what? This is crazy. So that's what I did. Every day after practice, I'd go get a box of wine. Uh, well, I'd always have a box of wine on tap, but then I'd go get something to supplement that. Like sometimes it'd be a 40, sometimes it'd be a case, sometimes it'd just be a bottle, a bottle mm-hmm. of Jack or a Bombay. Yeah, I was a big fan of Bombay Sapphire Gin, loved uh, Dirty Martini. And so I got to a point, man, where I was drinking every day when I could afford it. When I couldn't afford it, I just drank cheaper shit every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like like it got to a point, man. I remember, come on, you know, yeah, everybody got those signs, man. I started waking up with beer on my chest because I would fall asleep on my back with a can, and I would have it. That's when I would have it rest. I'd take a sip, fall asleep, have a sip on my chest, and then you know you wake up and roll over, and I'm like, oh, this is crazy, but um. I, I, I had a job at uh, T-Mobile in for a little while, and one of the things I used to do in the break, I'd go over across the street to the bar and drink, or before my shift, always. I mean, whenever whenever I could afford to drink, that that's what it was about, man. And, and when there was unlimited alcohol, like at a house function, that was the worst, man. Mm. Uh, you know, I always find the, the topic of, like, drinking booze a fascinating one, right? It's like, you know... The way that you describe it, it sounds a lot like you were like an, just like a bad drunk, right? Like you couldn't stop, like you didn't have any self control. Would that yeah, be accurate? Yeah, that, that's that, that's the best way to put it. Because because I could, oh man, see, see it's hard. Because I think about some shit I did. I, I I I never had that like, oh man, I gotta go drink. Like that never happened, right? Mm-hmm. But the minute the the pot was topped, you know, the top was pot, man. It was a. It was it, man. You couldn't stop. That that was me, and I had the worst—not the worst personality, but but I used to say dumb shit like, uh, "You gotta get blackout drunk like once a week. Make sure your mindset is still on point because you mm-hmm. you know your drunk mind's going to tell you the truth." Which which now I think is this. when I hear people say that, I'm like, "You understand? That's putting you under the influence. It's like a poison in your brain." I'm not saying I, I'm not anti-alcohol. I'm anti-alcohol for me, right? But I'm around you know people who, who drink all the time. I got no issue with it. Especially if you're in control, you know, enjoy your life. But but I'm not that guy. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't. I definitely couldn't control it. 